Very generally, radar uses radio waves to detect the location of objects. Radio waves are electromagnetic waves generally below about 1 gigahertz. Applications of radar include detecting the presence of, say, aircraft, ships, motor vehicles, and even tunnels underground. Here is an image of a basic radar system being used to detect the presence of two airplanes in the sky. For simplicity for our design challenge, let's start with a monostatic radar system, where the transmitter and the receiver are both at the same location, as shown here. Radar systems typically, typically work by sending out pulses of electromagnetic waves in the direction of interest. The presence of an object and details about that object may be determined by looking at the characteristics of individual pulses reflected by the object. Let's make a sketch of our scenario, a radar system applied to detecting people trapped in the snow. There is going to be ground somewhere beneath all the snow. And say an avalanche has occurred, so there is some layer of snow above the ground. And then there might also be a person buried somewhere in the snow. For our monostatic radar system, we might imagine having the radar antenna above the snow, pointing downward. So we might imagine a scenario like this. It would also be helpful to be able to move this radar system across the snow in order to scan for any people buried in the snow. Now for this radar system to work, we would want to send pulses of electromagnetic waves down towards the snow. And we would also want to be able to see individual reflections. Reflections can be created whenever there are changes in the electrical characteristics of the materials. So for example, there could be reflections generated at the snow surface, the snow, the air-snow interface, and also at the snow-human body interface. And even reflections might be generated within the body itself. And another reflection could be generated at the body-snow interface and then at the snow ground interface. In order to make it easy to separate all these separate out all these reflections, we might imagine that we will want a fairly narrow pulse in time. That is if our pulse is too long in time, individual reflections from different interfaces might start to overlap each other and it will be harder to isolate individual reflections and also figure out what caused the reflections. So what do you think? Could a radar system like this work? Could a reflection created by a person trapped in the snow be strong enough for us to measure it? Could we determine that that reflection came from a person and not from something else? And could we separate that reflection out from, say, reflections caused by the snow and the ground and anything else nearby? Well, to investigate this, we could just find a field of snow and start running some experiments. But experiments are generally expensive to conduct, and we don't even know yet how we would design the experiments. Instead, to help us save time and money, let's test our radar system numerically, using the help of a computer. We can test out different pulse shapes and characteristics, and we can computationally test how well the system would work before going to the trouble of implementing it. In order to computationally test the radar system, we need to solve Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations govern the propagation of electromagnetic signals and how they interact with different materials and objects. That is, if we apply and solve Maxwell's equations to the geometry of this problem, we'll be able to understand how the electromagnetic pulses will reflect or propagate through the snow and any people trapped in the snow, and we can test out the radar system. Now when I say Maxwell's equations, I'm referring specifically to Ampere's and Faraday's laws. We can write Ampere's and Faraday's laws in various forms. At the top of this slide are Maxwell's equations, Ampere's and Faraday's laws, written in the time domain pointwise form, meaning that we can use these two equations to solve for electromagnetic wave propagation physics at individual points in space and how they evolve over time. Or we can write Maxwell's equations in the time domain 
integral form. Using this form of Maxwell's equations, we can more easily solve for electromagnetic propagation over a region of space, rather than at a specific point. Now, whether we use the pointwise form or the integral form of Maxwell's equations just depends on the problem we're solving, and which one is easier to apply. Both sets of equations solve the same physics. Lastly, we can also write Maxwell's equations in the frequency domain, the sinusoidal steady state, where all the time derivatives now are written as j omega terms, and the electric and the magnetic fields are now vector phasors. We can easily use the frequency domain form when we can assume the source of the electromagnetic fields is a sinusoid, or when the source is comprised of a finite number of sinusoids. The reason we would use the frequency domain form when we have a sinusoidal source, or a source comprised of a finite number of sinusoids, is because these equations have omega in them, which is equal to 2 pi f, the frequency of the wave. This means we have to solve these equations again and again for every frequency of interest. So there are several different forms of Maxwell's equations, time domain, frequency domain, pointwise form and integral form. Which form should we use to design our radar system? Let's first decide between the time domain and the frequency domain. Think about which form you would choose for this problem and why.